I'm painting a candle, a Paschal candle, an Easter candle, decorating it for uh, Mark the Evangelist Uniting Church in North Melbourne. I'm starting the design using PowerPoint. Then transfer that design onto uh, Windows uh, for putting in the Alpha, Omega and the date. And then I'm able to transfer that design onto the beeswax candle because by tracing over that design onto the, on, while it's on the candle, the imprint uh, is made into the wax. But I'm also going to be applying uh, quite a bit of gold leaf, 23 karat hard press gold leaf. And uh, for this, I need to apply gesso. In fact, I need to apply gesso for the paint to stick to the wax too, because it just pulls, it just doesn't stick to the wax. So the gesso that I'm applying is made from rabbit skin glue. Now it's rabbit skin glue one part to 15 parts water, and then 24 parts of whiting but then applying something I've never done before, and that is to apply red ochre pigment to make a red gesso. And particularly for the gold color, that will work much better because it's better to have uh, that richness of gold underneath rather than white. But I need to apply this also for all the painting work. So I'm going to be painting the Alpha and Omega and the, uh, the date. It'll need a couple of coats and the, I'll be painting over that gesso for the uh, lettering in a Venetian red. A red pigment uh, with tempera, egg tempera, egg yolk plus white wine, equal parts. Here the imprint of the cross will be left in the gesso. And reapplying the, uh, the masking tape because in order for the gold to stick to the candle, it won't stick to gesso, but it will uh, adhere to um, an acrylic high gloss varnish, a couple of coats. So I want these bands of gold around the candle. And at least half an hour after the second coat, it oh dear, as I took all the uh, uh, the masking tape off, it took off some of the uh, gesso, so that'll need to be repaired later on. But let's uh, go ahead with the with the gold, and I'm using a, uh, a dentist's tool in order to clean away uh, surplus bits of gold that attached to places I didn't want it to go. And each time I apply this gold leaf, I breathe on the prepared area and it gives a, a moisture that enables the gold to adhere much better than it would otherwise. You can keep applying uh, the gold, you can put on a number of layers so that it gives a, a, a good solid coverage. And here the Venetian red is being painted onto the red gesso with egg tempera. So repairing the muck up that I made with the gesso, this is the white gesso and it looks pretty crummy. So gone back to putting in the uh, red ochre, much nicer. And now I'm going to paint that area with ultramarine blue. Again, this is egg tempera. 
and I want to have a design on the opposite side, but I wanted to find the absolute centre part, so I used string in order to uh, work out where that centre point was, and a pair of compasses to put in the, the circle, and I'm painting that area again, egg tempera, with um, unbleached titanium, and it needs another coat. Now I'm applying the uh, acrylic varnish to the area that I want the Celtic cross to adhere to. And again it needs a couple of coats. And on went the gold pressing and layer after layer. And, uh, and dust it off. It needs a wipe with a absolutely clean uh, cotton piece and it just gives it a, a, a bit of a shine. Again uh, the dental tool to tidy up. But it didn't work. I wasn't happy with it. So I scraped it off and I'm starting again reapplying uh, the uh, gesso, making it as smooth as possible and then putting in the design all over again. But this time using a sharp tool to inscribe the cross into the gesso to make a firmer line for the gold to sit in. and then apply the acrylic uh, varnish again. Two coats, and then the gold all over again. Dust off. And reapply the uh, ultramarine blue. It's a very bright blue, ultramarine blue, but with the red underneath it, it knocks it back and it's quite a nice deep blue. I like that. So the plan was to do something quite uh, extraordinary and that was to put a design on the back of the icon of an icon on the back of the candle and so uh, this is uh, what's called a mandillion it uh, uh, is the face of Christ uh, and the legend behind this icon is that uh, uh, Adgar the king of Edessa asked uh, Jesus to come and heal him uh, Jesus wasn't able to go but uh, sent the towel that he just dried his washed face with and imprinted, miraculously imprinted on that towel was his face. And so this icon painted with a, uh, an undercoat of um, raw umber green and then yellow ochre and, and red as uh, skin tones and then white applied to that for several uh, highlights burnt umber for the hair, put in the firm details and the beard, and the cross is in Mars orange. Bit of Ercolano red for blushing and lips, and then the inscription in unbleached titanium. A few highlights in the hair and there we have an icon of the Mandillion and, and there we have our candle ready for the Easter Vigil.